Today we're going to work on a WF3620. The printer uses original Epson ink and uh, the black and the yellow are clogged. The black is more severe, uh, there's no black coming out and the yellow has missing lines. Uh, so we just do a standard flushing. Uh, we got a piece of a paper towel and uh, we fold it three times and then we put underneath the, the, uh, the printer and then we move the cartridge carriage over okay if you don't know how to how to free the carriage what you do is uh, you plug the power in once it start moving to the middle and you, add, you disconnect the power Uh, so we start with uh, less aggressive uh, flushing. I'm going to use uh, this flushing tube, uh, which uh, look a little bit weird, and uh, you can get those from uh, BCH. Uh, you go to accessories and uh, tubing. And uh, it's uh, this tube. It comes with a bigger tube and small tube. What you do is you slide the small tube inside the bigger tube. And uh, then the smaller tube will fits the ink intake of the printhead. So you push the small tube on the printhead. Then you fill the tube with a cleaning solution or water or, or ink. Here we, f we fill a clear ink which doesn't have any color. Then we just stir it and uh, get any air bubble out. And then we just leave it. Some people leave it for a day, some people leave it for a week. And just uh, check it periodically, make sure there's some fl there fluid in the, in the tube. Uh, so the second day, we can see the result. Um, we have a uh, magenta, uh, cyan, the yellow coming out. Uh, my concern is that there, there's no enough uh, uh, black coming out. So I'll need to flush it before I put the cartridge in. So we're going to do the same routine. Get a piece of paper towel, fold, fold. Oh. Put in the middle. Okay. Now we remove the tubes. The second method is a more aggressive version of a flushing. We'll need an unclogging syringe with a tube and uh, some fluid. You can use ink, or water, or a cleaning solution. In this case, we use a clear, clear ink. So if something goes wrong, we don't splash ink everywhere. So we're going to attach the end of the tube to the ink intake. And then just push the liquid through. And do not push too hard. Oh, it's really, it's really easy. So this one is not clogged. I'm surprised. So maybe it, it just it doesn't have ink, or it's already unclogged last night. And uh, since I already did a black, why not just finish others with a, with a flush? Good, that's the black I want. Okay, now we're gonna get a cartridge ready. We're gonna use a, a BCH uh, RCEPT252XL.
Okay, first thing we do is figure out which one is the air plug, which one is the refill plug. It's pretty easy to see. So there are two holes. One is one is plugged with a clear plug. Another is is a plug with a this color plug. Okay. So for the for the for the hole in the front, you can see if I stick a needle in, okay, it goes pretty far. So it's pretty easy to fill this chamber. But for the one in the back, you cannot get in get into it too much. So this is air hole. Okay, so this is refill hole. This is air hole, and. Uh, when you when you have the printer in uh, in operation, you should keep the air hole open. So this hole should be open, and you should plug the refill hole. So after I refill it, I'm going to plug the color plug back into here. Okay, and uh, I'm going to just keep the clear plug somewhere safe. So in the future, if I need to move the Printer to a different uh, state, or or ship it to some somebody. I can plug this back, so the ink will not uh, will not spill. But but the, for the rest of the lifetime of the printer, you probably will not need this plug. Some of you ask me why we put uh, the the color plug in the air hole, and uh, so why don't we just put it in the Refill hole. Then ask people to re to remove the color plug, and uh, we kind of force you to have to move this plug. Otherwise, otherwise, if I put a clear plug here, you will never, uh, not never. I just like a. There's some people will never think about remove this plug. So we kind of force you to put this out. Okay, this is the uh, philosophy behind it. Okay, so with that side, let's refill. And don't worry about this piece of uh, plastic. And uh, when you punch it in, it'll, the printer will break this. Uh, there are lots of hor horror stories uh, saying that you, you shouldn't use the dye ink in a pigment cartridge. Uh, actually, you can, and uh, I am going to post another video show you uh, the test with that. If you know how to do it, you can. If you don't, you don't. You may ask what happened if you um, refill through the air hole. Um, nothing happened. Uh, the refill hole is connected to the air hole. It just makes your life a lot harder to do that way. Uh, I have a customer actually spent two hours to refill through the air hole. So that's, uh, that's what have going to happen. Okay, now we plug the we, we plug back the plug for the refill hole. Okay, we gotta start with the cartridge first. And uh, pay attention to this first error message, uh, which says there is no cartridge. And uh, what it says is it cannot detect those cartridges. This error is really similar to uh, another one that we're going to see pretty soon. So this one says ink cartridges are not installed correctly. I'll push down and make sure you hear a click. 
And also pay attention when you press it down, the printer can detect it, and uh, that cartridge is going to light up uh, on the LCLED screen. Okay, uh, for the new cartridge, you might see this. It cannot recognize the following cartridges. So since they said they cannot, rec cannot recognize, and uh, we will proceed to, to try to uh, just wiggle it, wiggle it a little bit and see if it can detect it. Maybe just a, a bad contact with the printer. Uh, we do receive a custom report on this. So first thing we try is uh, we try just open and close the lid, see if we can wake, wake the printer up. Uh, we have to see we don't know exactly why this happened, but uh, here's uh, something that we can try. So the first one doesn't work. Just open, open and close the printer. Uh, just to make sure every time I read the error message because they write their error message really really similar uh, so the second thing we tried is uh, we remove and then reinsert the cartridge so we removed it now we press it back you can see every time we press it back that disappear Okay. And then we just try it again. Uh, this error is a little bit different than the others. The first few errors says a, the cartridge is now cannot be recognized. That means the they cannot the computer cannot tell if there's cartridge or not. But this one says the black cartridge is not installed correctly. But if I check the ink level, the other cartridges show the ink level. So the other cartridges are installed correctly, except the black one. Oh, by the way, you might get some air in here. Uh, normally what I do is I shake it, so get some air bubble out. Uh, basically, I'm just taking it out and uh, reinsert it. Uh, it still doesn't work. Um, then I found out that uh, there is a piece of uh, plastic rubber uh, st stuck on the black cartridge. So I thought that may be the reason. Okay, this is the happy screen. Um, uh, so you have not installed the Genu Epson in cartridge. You can see the error is pretty similar to the other errors that said there's something wrong. It's intentionally designed to scare you. 
So basically, when you read it, yeah, we are, this is not genuine Epson. So just hit proceed. And there was a quality of the R uh, or reliability is not going to be as good as Epson. Yeah, right. Uh, continue use. Oh, yeah, of course. That's why we do this. And the ink level. So looking. We're gonna update this printer with the newest firmware. However, do not do this at home. Once you get a printer with a refillable cartridge, do not install any update and disable the auto update. Epson has been known to search and kill refillable cartridges, so you don't want a you, you don't want their update at all. Uh, we get the black. Come out really good. But the color is not good. Do another cleaning. Uh, we could just use uh, absence uh, building cleaning routines. We use it three times then with a couple hours and do three times again. But in this case, we, we're kind of in a hurry, so we decided to flush the printhead again. So we pretty much flush it twice in, a, in, a, in an hour. And out of sudden, uh, we have uh, this problem again. Uh, if we read the error, the cartridge cannot be recognized. That means the printer cannot detect the cartridge. Uh, but if we open up and uh, just do a cartridge check, and it will tell us the cartridge uh, are there installed correctly. And then when we try to print a page, it goes back to cartridge can go, cannot be recognized error again. Uh, so we tried all the trick, taking cartridge out and put them back in. Another thing to check, for example, if uh, the printer complaint, the cyan and magenta cannot be recognized. Take a look of the the <clears throat> the pin in the back. See the sand the magenta pin a lot higher than others. It turns out the absence pin can be moved up and down. So if we move move all the way up, it cannot have a good contact with the circuit board in the back. So when you take the cartridge out, make sure you pull the pins all the way back and then pull the cartridge up. Otherwise, you may still connect to the pin. Uh, if you do it often enough, you could end up with a pin like this. So the one on the left is working one. The, work on, the one work on the right, you can see it's missing the bottom, the bottom ones in the back. So if you only see it in the front, they all look the same. But because you push it down all the time, the one in the back get weird out. I want to see through that part. Okay. Okay, is it that, that the brass one? Yeah. The actually broken from here. Oh, okay. That's why the cyan doesn't, uh, doesn't show cyan. So one of this thing broke and fall in, fall into the fall into the printer head. Yeah, okay. Okay. So also uh, just uh, just make sure all those pins are pushed down and uh, connected. Uh, 
uh, this time after we put them in, we did a check, and they cannot recognize them anymore. Uh, try to take them out and put them back. And this time, uh, we're greeted with a happy screen. You are now uh, installing a genuine Epson cartridge. And uh, so the printer is happy with those cartridge again. So we had to continue. We thought the problem is solved. But immediately, uh, it's back to cannot recognize the cartridge again. Uh, we we'll try to remove and install again, and it still doesn't work. Uh, this is beyond frustration. So, uh, so we stop and uh, looking elsewhere for inspiration. We drank beer, uh, my friends and I, the boys and girls. Yes, we drank beer. I liked beer. Still like beer. Sometimes probably had too many beers, and sometimes other people had too many beers. What we drank you, beer. We liked beer. What do you consider to be too many beers? I don't know. Uh, you know, we whatever the chart says. Uh. So we went to a local establishment to check out their chart. So I have this printer. Um, have problem the recognizing the cartridges. So it doesn't matter what cartridge we put in, either it's uh, uh, OEM or uh, third-party cartridge. So let's say we're putting a, a Magenta cartridge. You can see, uh, okay. So oh, we're putting a third party black. Yeah. So I think what happened is uh, because we flooded the, uh, uh, not flooded, we flushed the printer twice in a row. So there's some uh, moisture gets into the cables inside the. the uh, inside the, the circuit board uh, on the on the cartridge carriage. So if we just let it dry for 24 hours, let the moisture get out, and uh, the printer is back in action again. Uh, you still can see some moisture on the on the roller that uh, had a mark on the paper, but everything else looking pretty good. To alcohol, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. Uh, so we did a, a big batch of pruning and. Uh, you can see it says ink is low. This is just a warning. And uh, the printer actually doesn't know how much ink is in the cartridge. It goes by how many pages printed. So they store this information on the cartridge chip. So for example, if the chip says zero, and uh, the printer will think that it hasn't printed any pages, so it will show a full tank of ink. And uh, the BCH cartridge, uh, they are equipped with ARC chip, which is auto reset chip. So it's number from zero to the max, then it rolls back to zero again. And uh, as a consequence, you cannot set the number of chip yourself. So if you say ink is low, you take the cartridge out and refill it, you put it back, the printer will still think ink is low uh, because the page number hasn't reached the maximum number yet. He hasn't rolled back. Okay.
Okay, this is what happen if the chip rolls back to zero, and the printer actually cannot detect the cartridge again. And the reason is the page number roll back to zero. In this case, it's the black. However, the printer uh, thinks it hasn't taken the cartridge out and uh, put a new cartridge in. So how how it how how, how it come to zero? So the printer got confused. All you need to do is uh, pretending you are changing cartridge. Actually, um, most of the time, I take this opportunity to take the cartridge out and uh, fill it up to the maximum, and uh, then put it back. You can see each time it's trying to get you to use the real Epson ink. You have not installed a genuine Epson cartridge. And now you can see the black level is full. Right now, if you take other colors out and refill it, and uh, you will still see this ink level. It's not going to show the new level. Uh, so we, we go back to printing and uh, soon there will be another uh, another cartridge depleted and then we take it out and uh, fill it up and uh, put it back and uh, work again. So the previous owner printed uh, 600 pages using the Epson ink and uh, the printer got clocked and we can't unclock it today and we're going to print the 300 pages. So what are we going to do with 300 pages of restaurant menu? Free lunch. I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you. Cheers.